I think we've all been here before. You see the enemy jungler on a ward, but your laner is completely blind, ignores your pings, and dies to it anyways. Then you get blamed for absolutely no reason, and your bot lane ends it, and they start flaming each other. Yikes. This isn't exactly what you want to see when you open the scoreboard, but it just happens sometimes. However, you can definitely still carry these kinds of games, and I pretty much solo turned the game around, winning in just 26 minutes. While I could just complain about my lanes doing everything wrong or get super frustrated, it's better to just carry it, even when it can feel impossible sometimes because this is what you're working with. I mean, come, come on me, man. Come on me. Oh my gosh, dude. Really glad that this clip gives context to what I'm saying, but anyways, definitely easier said than done. Today, we're going to be walking through decisions that I made in order to turn this game around and show you how you can carry even when all your lanes are losing. Let's get right into it. I think that looking at the champ select, it's pretty clear why the game felt the way that it did. We have almost no proactivity in this game, while they have a pike and rel that can choose fights whenever they want. Where would you choose to path towards this game, and would you start at your blue or red? Because MF is the only AD damage on the team, and definitely your strongest early laner, it's a no-brainer to path towards bottom this game. She needs to be ahead, or the enemies can just stack MR, and life will get really difficult very quickly. After red, where would you go? Krugs, Raptors, Blue, or none of the above? Probably gonna end up full clearing, like we don't have a whole lot of proactivity bot lane unless the enemy team engages for us, right? So like, I can't really path with the idea that we're gonna make something happen. It's more about the idea of like, if there's an opportunity that they give us, I will take it. Because of this, I want to take a longer path and do my Krugs. I really can't force the idea of something like a three or four camps into a gank because it's just not super likely that it's going to work out. But while I intend to full clear, it doesn't mean I'm locked into it and you should never really go into the game with the mindset that you're going to do a set route. Things will always change. A perfect example of this is right now actually. I held my skill point here and don't use it so that if I needed to gank, I could skill up E. But if I just want to farm, two points in Q makes more sense. It's these small things that just let you be prepared for when things go unexpectedly and right on Q, we're already off schedule. Graves just left our bot side with R blue and Gromp in his pocket. So now what? Would you invade, wait for crab, gank bot, or gank mid? Mid is really difficult to gank unless Pike goes in first. And invading would be really hard since Pike can always just move and ruin the play. Doing nothing usually isn't the best idea since it's a straight up waste of time, which only leaves one choice, going bottom. The idea behind this is not to kill the enemy lane, it's to get Pryo somewhere so that we can actually do something after. Without camps up and an invade being nigh impossible, we're really out of options, and that's kind of a situation that's going to happen a lot in these games. You need to create opportunities through plays like this. We just push them off the wave, and that gives me a chance to secure the crab and then look for something new. Now, would you gank mid, invade, recall, or cross through for the other crab? Like I mentioned earlier, Pike is basically impossible to gank unless he E's in, so that's out of the question. I also don't have the luxury of just running across to get the other crab because, well, Pike joins that fight and I lose. Recalling would be fine if there really was no other play, but because I saw Graves leave earlier into topside, I have a suspicion that these Raptors and Krugs are up. It gives me a chance to get deep vision to help track Graves on the next clear, which is super important. I make sure to dodge showing on the wave since I want to stay hidden. If I do show, Graves can easily just invade my respawning Krugs, and then I'm not in a great spot. Now, I'm actually ahead. Even though Graves has equal CS to me, I have the more valuable camps taken, and my respawns are much better. Because he invaded the way that he did, going right into my blue, none of his camps were taken until after he got back into his jungle. At that point, everything on my side of the map had been cleared out, which means my stuff is coming up sooner than his. Now I'm looking to cash out that advantage by immediately clearing my camps, and to no one's surprise, there really aren't any available ganks, so I just take my Krugs and Raptors before looking mid. After fighting for a bit, getting a Dark Harvest stack, and laying Pike's recall, now I need to make another choice. What would you do next? Invade, continue clearing your camps, look for a gank bot, or none of the above? I definitely want to invade here. 
Without knowing where Graves is, I don't want to head towards bottom, since I could just be walking into a fight where the enemy lane collapses first and I die. My advantage here is that Azir is full health and has 6 soon off of the big wave, so I want to keep the fight around mid and play around him. Unfortunately, he doesn't move at all. But it's not all bad, at least I get Rel to waste some time and delayed Graves from doing his camps. If both of us do nothing right now, it benefits me since my stuff is respawning and his isn't cleared yet. Now, where would you go? Bottom camps, invade again, top crab, or look for a gank? My bot side camp should be safe since I just saw Graves, and if he wants to get to them, he'll be walking over my pink, so I don't need to worry about him taking them. With Azir pushing the wave, we now have priority, and I need to make use of that, so contesting for something like top crab is the best idea. Here, what would you do? Go back to your red, look for a gank top, invade top side, or none of the above. With Malphite having 6 and R up, I don't even really need to think about this one. I can't just beat Graves one on one, so an invade isn't going to accomplish much, and Malphite with ult is a free flash or a kill almost every time. What would you do now? Push the wave, invade, go back to red, or recall? I don't really need to help him push since he's got plenty of health and mana left. And now that Teemo's dead, I actually opened up a new play for myself and can invade. Especially once I see Graves' bot side, I know that I can't really defend my bot camps in time, so I need to at least try to trade them. On the off chance he doesn't take mine, I actually get ahead off of this. I tried really desperately to get my bot lane to go push Graves off with tons of pings, but again, zero help, and my mid laner is flaming me. Joy. Fortunately, both his camps are up, so I steal those away, and now from here, what next? Would you recall, go back to farming your camps, or try to run to your bot side to stop Graves from taking everything? The bottom camps are definitely a lost cause at this point, and so is Dragon. You have to be willing to give up things and trade stuff just to add more gold into the game and stay relevant when you're behind. I opt to go for my camp since I don't really need the tempo that a recall would provide right now, and would rather just get my raptors respawning ASAP. After clearing Krugs, what would you do? Recall, Rift Herald, Gank Top, or none of the above? We know that Graves is bottom, and that I probably don't have camps up down there, so there's not much else to do besides a top gank, or just recalling and running around for a bit. Since Malphite has R coming back up, I just opt to go for it and get a kill. When we see Pike running up the river, what now? Would you try to push the wave, just leave and recall, go for crab, or none of the above? Graves isn't here yet, so Pike alone isn't super threatening with how healthy we are. The goal of pushing the wave to crash still remains, so you can mostly ignore him and just work on your objective. Unfortunately, I thought the red buff slow would be enough for my autos to just kill, but he has boots too at this point, which I didn't see, so I end up wasting my flash. So I get for not basing though. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> not like this. After basing and walking towards bot side, I have a couple of different choices I can make. Should I farm my camps, try and gank bottom, invade, or go contest the Rift Herald? I need to take advantage of the fact that Graves isn't here. We just saw him topside, and for him to not always be playing into me with the lead that he has is a huge mistake. You need to force plays when behind to get back in the game, so I'm going to take every chance I can to gank. Here, because Graves and Pike just killed my mid, I get spam ping, but it also means I can't really invade. So I just go back to doing my camps, clearing upwards, and get to catch midwave in the process. What would you do from here? Continue clearing, start rift, push mid, or invade topside? While I would love to invade or do Herald, I don't have priority yet. I should definitely wait for my laners to start pushing their waves and then I can look for it. You don't want to rush here and end up dying, so finding an efficient way to kill time like Raptors is perfect with the idea of doing all of that other stuff later. Would you cancel your base here? Yes or no? Pike started walking up towards me, so I'm a little scared right now that he might have vision on me somehow. So getting out is just a safe play. 
I can also look to gank top since Malphite has R again, and worst case I just go back to my Krugs. I have something to do no matter what. Teemo just walks up to eat a Malphite ult to the face, and I get another free kill off of it. I'm really just playing around my teammates who can enable me, and not really forcing people to play my way by doing crazy invades and such. The straight kills and counter jungling opportunities that I took basically just let me get to my items very quickly and got me to the point where I can now solo carry team fights that will get my team back into the game. It's important to note that getting ahead individually is the most important thing if you want to come back in solo queue. I ignored most objectives this game, and pings for ganks, and I did stuff that was selfish but high probability to work like counter jungling and getting farm advantage. In general, be selfish, then you can actually have the leverage needed to turn things around later. If you try and play for your team or just to stop the bleeding, you'll constantly be behind. I was always looking for proactive plays that were away from the scary people on the enemy team and really paid attention to how they were moving so I could exploit the rest of the team without interacting with, say, Pike or Graves in this game. Playing with all losing lands is obviously always harder than playing with winning ones, but it doesn't completely doom your game. You just have to be active in making decisions that keep you relevant, even if the rest of the world is crumbling around you. So you might be asking yourself why go to skillcap.com to improve when I could just watch YouTube guides or play the game. Well, let me show you. Let's say you're a jungler who's struggling to climb the ladder. Not only would you get over 40 site exclusive courses for jungle, but maybe really what you've been struggling with is ganking as a jungler. Well, we got you covered with four different courses breaking down how to gank when you're jungling. Not only do we have the largest catalog of guides for League of Legends in the entire world with over 1500 videos to watch, but these are then curated by the top coaches and players into courses on every skill and topic you need to master in order to truly improve and climb the ladder. If all of this wasn't enough, we haven't even touched on our catalog of over 700 smurf commentaries, where a challenger expert shows you how to climb out of your rank and you're guaranteed to get any questions answered by them directly. Not to mention, we're the only service to offer a rank improvement guarantee. If you don't climb at least 5 divisions while actively using Skillcap, you can claim a refund, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Head to Skillcap.com and get the rank you've always wanted. Link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.